Hey, what's up guys? This is ZK, and today I'm going to be bringing you video number 6 in my tutorial series of how to create a Nazi Zombies map for World at War on the PC. So uh, here's what the map was so far. As you, If you have seen my previous videos, then you'll know that this is what we've been doing so far. Uh, we got a Bible Dorn, we got some perks, mystery box, you know, all that stuff. And uh, so now um, I'm going to be showing you how to do all the bells and whistles that are, that we're going to need into your map, which would be adding lights and reflection probes, and we're going to put path nodes everywhere and stuff. And I'll walk you through the process, and I'll show you how to change your starting points. Because default right now, if we ran the map as it is right now, we would start out with 500,000 points. Now, if you think that's a little much, or if you you know want more, I don't know why you'd want more, but if you want more. Okay, or if you just want to set it at 500 as the normal standard, then I will show you how to do that. But we'll save that to the end of the video. And uh, so right now, um, let me just quickly grab these path nodes here. And we're going to put them all over the map. And I'll show you about how you want to do for spacing-wise. Um, so obviously we don't need to put path nodes inside these things because we don't want that. Then zombies would be walking through this stuff. Obviously, that's not good. So uh, take a look over here. You'll, you see our dog... Um, script struct over here. Make sure that these path nodes are not interrupting any of these other brightly colored squares. So don't make sure that they're not affecting that. They don't have to be completely, you know, flat on the ground, but as long as they're, you know, just in the gen in this general area, then the zombies will be able to do, you know, whatever you want them to go. So, uh, let's just push the space bar, you know, as you have it selected and copy it. Um, you don't need to have them too close together. About like this which should be good. So you don't need to put them, you know, right next to each other. And make sure under no circumstances can they be touching. If they are touching it, you will get errors when compiling your map, and you won't be able to run it. So we're not a f we don't like errors. So uh, here we go. Now this should allow zombies to walk anywhere they want to inside the map. So let me just quickly copy some path nodes here. Make sure that if you make a doorway. The doorway is wide enough and high enough. This is too wide and too high, just so you know. You can make it smaller. But make sure you have a path node right inside of the door. Um, like, right in the center of the door in between. Otherwise, the zombies won't walk through it most of the time. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they won't. So, let me just put some path nodes in this room. They don't have, they don't have to be, you know, perfect where they are. You can just take them and, you know, just make sure that they're scattered around well, just like I'm doing here. So, and there we go. So, now we got this room full of path nodes. That should be good. Next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add a reflection probe. Now, a reflection probe is what it's going to do is if you're in this map, okay, and say you're looking at the Juggernog machine, the Juggernog machine might be, everything that's on it that's red might be green. Now, obviously, we don't want that, and that's due to bad colors. So, a reflection probe will, will you know, eliminate those colors and make everything look really good in the game. So you want to right click on your two-dimensional view and uh, go down to reflection probe and that will be a little green box. You want to put this you know about eye level and um, one in the right about in the center of the room. Uh, let's not put it in the mystery box just in case that might cause some errors. But uh, let's just put it right there just like that and anywhere in this room now the colors will be fixed. So let's copy one and let's put it in the next room. So there you go. Now we have reflection probes in both rooms, so we won't have any bad colors. Pretty sweet, huh? Because the first time I made a map, I didn't know anything about these. So I had bright red spots and bright purple spots and blue spots all over my textures on the wall and floor. And I'm just like, what is going on here? This isn't right. So then I had to do some research and found out about these. So la um, last thing before we figure out how to change starting points is you want to add a light. So click light, and uh, you'll get this white... Um, uh, what's it called? Diamond. There we go. Get this white diamond and uh, push N on your keyboard. And this is going to bring up how you can edit the light. Now, as you can see, this is what it's going to look like when you're in the game. So, like I said before, you know, when you, you absolutely have to have lights, otherwise it'll be pitch black in here. I wasn't kidding. You can see it's pitch black everywhere except for where, where the light is. So, let's so go over here and you can see radius. You want to change that depending on the size of your room, it'll be you know whatever uh, I changed it to 400 there now it's going to be as bright a lot brighter put it in the center of the room and uh, just ignore this thing right here uh, this stuff will not be here so just look around the rest of the room 
Uh, if that looks like enough light, that should be good. If you think it needs to be brighter, like you don't want it to go wider out, but you want it to be brighter, you can change the intensity. This is from 1 to 2. So now it's brighter. You can see as it looks. It looks pretty sweet. And uh, remember that this big black thing won't be here because, uh, you know, that's just triggers and stuff. It'll just be the mystery box there, and it'll be fine. So don't worry about that. Uh, you've got a nice light going on. And uh, let's come into this room here. And as you can see, this room is completely, you know, um, empty. Why is light? Man, I can't even talk. Uh, that light... Ugh! Sorry. Man, I must be really tired today. The room is dark, and you need a light in it. There we go. Okay, so I think this is this is pretty good for lighting-wise. Uh, hit the space bar, and we'll copy the light and move it into the other room. And it'll only light up the light that you have selected. So let's push escape, and there we go. So now we have a light. So uh, you can see here that this is not the actual lighting. Uh, when you have the light selected like this, it shows you the actual lighting. Well, this is weird. Why is it being so dark over here? Hmm. Well, ignore that, guys. I don't think that should have anything to do with it. Oh, wait. I see why. I see why it's doing that. The skybox needs to be moved over. There we go. Ah, there we go. All right, so now we've got our light over there. So now we've got our lights. And, yep, those are the last things that you'll have to do to your map besides the player spawn points. Uh, I almost forgot to do that, actually. So uh, let's save our map, save the map that you have, and open up the test map that we created before. If you haven't seen the previous videos, um, just run Script Placer and make and make a default Risa style map so that you get this when you load it up, all right? So this is what you want. You can see the reflection probe and light, just like I was explaining before. Uh, we want to copy this, 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 and this. So just select them all and then open up your map again. Don't do anything else. Just open up your map. Copy selection, yes. And so then we get all that stuff. Now, the the main, the big one in the middle, I'm not exactly sure what it does, actually, to be honest. Because it, it's not a player spawn point or anything like that. It just, you know, it seems like it just sits there. Oops. Didn't have them set on the ground. So make sure that they're on the ground, otherwise your player will spawn in the air. And uh, we'll just do it like this for a second. Well, now you can take these and move them wherever you want to. I'm going to put one here. And the arrow on the front will tell you which way they're which way they're going to be facing when they spawn. So you can just adjust that. These are all player 1, 2, 3 and 4 spawn points. And as far as I know, there isn't a way to make player 1 spawn in a certain spot. It'll like the game will when it compiles the map, it'll like randomly pick one of these script structs um, to be player 1 and from then on, that's all it'll give you. So I'm not exactly sure why that is, but whatever. So this one could be player one, or this one could be player one, or you know, you just you just don't know. I, it's weird. I'm not sure which one is which. So you'll just have to uh, live with whatever it gives you. I don't. Yeah, if I find out a way, I'll leave a little note on this video. But I don't know of any currently. So, there we've got our player spawn points, and that should be all that we need. And now this map is done. This is ready to go play it in the game. So, I'm going to save it and exit out. Now, I'll show you how to how to change your starting points. Go to your root folder, Call of Duty Activision, or I mean, Program Files, Activision, Call of Duty World at War, or wherever you have it, if you have it in a different spot. Go to Mods, and find your map mod. Nazi Zombie YouTube is the one that we're using, so... Whatever your mod is, you can edit that. Then go to Maps, and Zombie Mode. You'll find a GSC file. You want to open with WordPad, because sometimes um, Notepad doesn't work right. Okay, so now what you want to do is click Find up here, and find, uh, let's see, Start underscore Score. Okay, click Find Text. Hmm. Maybe that isn't what it is. Try just start. Uh, nope. Mm -hmm. Let's try start points. Hmm. Wonder what it is. Let's try start underscore. Hmm. 
keep looking. Hmm. I wonder what the deal is. Well, let's see if we can find it manually. It's a long deal here. Keep looking for it. Here, it's in this area. I know it's in this area here. Hmm. I am sorry, guys. Should maybe I should have had this prepared better. But when I typed in start, it was supposed to find me the ones that I wanted. Hmm. Okay, well, let's open it up in Notepad then. Notepad's a little easier to navigate in. Come on, where is it? So after that, here we go. Aha, I found it. All right, you'll see here it says set... Z okay, yeah, you can just search this right here. Set zombie var zombie score start. Hey, that should have appeared. Well, whatever. Anyway, you'll see zombie score start, and see here it's set to 500,000. If you want it set to 500, you just change that to 500, and change this to 100, all right? And then you can go up here and click save. And sometimes Notepad does this. That's why I don't like to use it. If it's not letting you save, then just copy this to, like, my documents, and then change it, and then copy it back over here and overwrite this one. But make sure that it's... um. A GSC file it can't be a text file or anything like that but I'm gonna leave it at 500,000 because then I can buy everything right away when we do the map so that's it for this video guys uh, thank you for watching and uh, make sure you come back for my next video where I'll show you how to make your own load screen this load screen will be able to be a picture or a video so this is pretty exciting you can create your own solo load screen that will display obviously while your map is loading